Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Your most requested song in our recent tally was Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. And to my understanding, this is largely because many of you want me to listen to Dio, or Ronnie James Dio. You guys never just call him Ronnie, so I'm going to follow your lead and call him either Ronnie James Dio or Dio. If somebody knows why that is, please tell me in the comments down below. This will be my first time hearing Dio, ever, ever. I'm pretty excited. He's been associated with some really big bands, and I did a little bit of research on him, which I'm going to highlight just some big points here. So his musical career began around 1957 in New York when he was in the band The Vegas Kings. And this band had other names as well. They were called uh, The Red Caps, I believe, at one point, and The Electric Elves at one point. The important thing here is he was playing bass. He wasn't the lead vocalist yet. And then in the 1970s, he teamed up with Richie Blackmore uh, from Deep Purple, and together they formed the band Rainbow. There were a bunch of songs from Rainbow that you guys also recommended. They just didn't have as many votes as Heaven and Hell, but maybe we'll get to them later. Let us know down below again which ones you would like to hear. Big moment, 1979, Ozzy Osbourne departed Black Sabbath and Dio took over. So that's where we're going to pick up. This performance is going to be of Heaven and Hell, a live performance from 1980 with Black Sabbath. Let's get to it. Oh my goodness, so much anticipation. Okay, uh, <laughs> he's got he's got a really interesting set of different tools already that I hear. Uh, one of them is he almost like when he goes up into his upper register, he almost has like a Freddie Mercury kind of quality about his voice. It's like a metal Freddie Mercury, uh, and he also he's he's able to bring in like this cleaner sound. Oh boy, his first few pitches were just great. They were clean. They were. They had a lot of cut, a lot of drive behind them, and they were really cleanly on that pitch. Uh, very impressive entry there. And then this grit that he's pulling in at the end, I was like, whoa, how do you... It's so interesting to me when a voice can have that much grit available and also that much cleanliness available. Um, the uh, I really love the way that it looks like he sings with his whole body so far. It doesn't look like he's just originating the sound from larynx up. It looks like he's uh, using his body to get into it. And that indicates to me that there will usually be more vocal longevity. Hey. <laughs> Super happy for that. Um, of course, I know that he's had a really long career, but that's evidence of why it was long. Now, um, I think we'll keep going for the... No, we're going to go back just a little bit. Okay. You're a taker. Jealous of his hair. Just gotta say, it's amazing hair. Uh, 
couple of bottom notes that he sings in there, I think are intentionally sharp. He just like moves them a little bit sharp and he did it both times in the same way. Cool stylization there. Uh, builds up a little more anxiety in listeners, a little more um, want, need. It's interesting. <laughs> He's doing something really cool in there. I'm going to nerd out a bit about, like already falling over my words. I'm going to nerd out about it for just a second. Uh, his phrasing was really interesting. So the, the like vocal line sometimes, you know, when you speak, you like, you tend to get louder in the middle and then kind of come back down at the end. And a lot of times vocal singing, you will see uh, a similar phrase in a song line as well. He sometimes is singing those really long lines, but sometimes he's also like cutting them off in the middle where it sounds like he gets up to a point where he's louder and then he just snatches it. He almost interrupts it. That's fascinating. The couple times he did it in there, he might've done it more than once. Uh, I know, I think I heard it at least two times, but it really captured my attention. Like, oh, what are you going to say next? It was fascinating. It makes me makes me really want to use that in, in my own singing some more. That's so cool. Okay, let's go back. I think it's back further. Further than that, even okay. Ah, I don't know the song very well yet, guys. Oh, here we go. Started like a second verse, maybe. Yes, right there. That's an example of one of the spots where he went up in volume and uh, and then just stopped it right away. Uh, what the words there? The lover of life's not a sinner. Interesting. The lover of life's not a sinner is how I'd say that. And he goes, the lover of life's of a sinner. Very, very intriguing phrasing. Uh there is your smoother line. Oh, but he cut it off. That's interesting. Even the ending is just a beginner, or the words there. He... <laughs> maybe the reason he's doing this is because ending and beginning the way it's playing around with that in this verse so he's using vocal phrasing to mimic that I wonder I wonder if that was his intention it's really interesting uh, so even when he goes to the beginner he starts to go down on that vocal phrasing and then again it interrupts so listen to you get to the meeting. oh let's go back a little bit the ending it's just the beginner So in each of those ons, it sounds like he extends them and brings them to an end rather than interrupt, which gives the impression that they keep going and going. It's very clear that he's intentionally doing this either extension or interruption of himself. It's fascinating. Yeah, Very interesting. 
vibrato in there. these sounds that he just made I don't think there were any real lyrics it was oh's and uh's and yeah's it was amazing to hear how he generated each of those sounds from a place that just felt very human they were very expressive but it wasn't a word but it had tons of emotion behind it and that's something that opera singers have to focus on a bunch when they're like ah and just singing tons of ahs in a row you're supposed to always think about what emotion is behind those ahs and those melismas. Now he's like making up his own melismas and it feels like they're just almost purely generated from emotion. They're not really melismas, by the way. He's making up his own sounds. They're not tons of runs in a row. But the point is, it's just emotion that's coming out and it happens to take the form of a vowel. Very interesting. <laughs> fun way to slide down and then then cry off of it at the end there i love already um it looks like he's just involving the audience with them a bunch i was warned this uh this musical performance this live performance is about 12 minutes long i think the original song was like five minutes maybe around that mark so that tells me that there's probably going to be an extensive section maybe with the audience i hope at some point because he already looks like he's involving them quite a bit um, also, he, I think someone told me that this came from Dio. You guys, you need to educate me. Every now and then there are things that I just don't know about from the history of rock and metal, which is why I'm doing Dio now, right? But so uh, this, I believe, originated with Black Sabbath and Dio. Let me know some more about that in the comments below, please. <laughs> Jazz singer riffing right now. Not only is, there, is his hair amazing, he also knows it. Look at the way he's playing with his hair. And they all seem to have really awesome hair. Uh, uh, I really wanted to mention, uh, it sounds like he's, I wonder if he's taking some inspiration from jazz. Because when he does these riffs, it almost sounds like jazz is scatting. Ah, hmm. It's like he's got some sort of, maybe even like a soul background or a blues background. I wonder if he brings that in or if that influenced him and how he chooses to stylize things. I also am getting very strong Freddie Mercury vibes, even the way that he 
approaches his stagecraft, obviously from this beautiful freeze frame, you can tell that he's very animated on stage. And the way he tosses his mic around also reminds me of Freddie Mercury. Anyhow, uh, that's a great comparison because I do think that Freddie Mercury is one of the greatest vocalists that has ever been. Let's keep going. Okay, that's a melisma. There you go. A bunch of vowels in, the ro in a row and just had great, uh, great emotional content to it as well. I like that they brought the lights up so they can see each other. Just like to try one thing. Keep your hands up if you would. I'm going to sing it on and on and on. Just like to have you sing it after me if you would. Just one time and see what it goes like. Okay, um, listen to his speaking voice. I'm going to re rewind it just a little bit so you can listen to that. Uh, it has a lot of open sound in it. His speaking voice is healthy. That means he's been continuing to sing healthy. It's normal for a speaking voice to raise more in pitch as a person's been singing, but you shouldn't ever get a scratchiness to it, unless you're trying to talk too low the whole time. Uh, but you should never feel like it's exhausting to speak right after singing if you keep that openness. Now, a lot of people will speak the wrong way after singing and damage their vocal cords because they're trying to push into their sound. He is not doing that. It is open. It is it is really beautiful and relaxed in the sound, which is how he sings as well. Uh, often singing and speaking uh, well together uh, is another indication of just great vocal hygiene. Just like to try one thing. Keep your hands up if you would. All the people in this front part, surrounded by all the people on the sides, all of you just go do it there. Just lay back for a second, huh? You're obviously the people with the most courage, and you got to the ticket office first, and you're the loudest, and you're all those things. So we don't need your help, so you just lay back if you would. JT, oh my do some lights, my son. Doc, you just come. It's all you people on the sides that we want. It's your chance. Uh, this is this is awesome. I love any sort of audience participation. People, there's all kinds of really awesome research that's been done about how singing just helps people be happier. And one of the things that they uh, they found out is that when you sing together, you will actually often release a hormone that helps you to trust the people you're singing with. And so I think it can bring a sense of unity to people at a concert and uh, also a sense of unity with the band. So I, very much, it's one of the things that I really like seeing in live performances is when they have moments that they sing together or just where there's audience involvement, even just clapping together can help it feel like you're all a part of it. It is also very important to me that bands, artists, that they understand that it's not just for them, the, the music they're creating and putting out there, it's for other people. And it's very clear that Black Sabbath is aware of that in the way that they're involving the audience. Good cross, mate. Now just you on the side, sing along, if you would. Here we go. You can be louder than them. I 
I dig that the music is dropping in between. So he sings it first, and then when he points to them to sing it, they drop the music, and that's so that the audience can feel, feel and hear themselves singing together more. Now you can lay back and rest for a second, and you're going to show them how to do it, right? All right, here we go. Sing. On and on and on. Yeah. On and on and on. Okay, shake the place. On and on. hear that the audience was like oh that chop note oh we'll try and go for it maybe it didn't quite reach it it was cute they tried now just one time everyone. there were a couple great voices that made it here we go You've obviously come to this place because you like rock and roll music. Is that right? <laughs> and you will be able to see whoever is a good <laughs> rock and roll organization, right? Oh and my goodness, again. We should count how many times he does something that. Other than what it really is. If you all join us, we'll tell you what it means. It means long live rock and roll. Put him up! Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna go back. Today, I learned. I'll we'll tell you what it means. It means long live rock and roll. Put him up! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the many comments that some of you already probably posted below. I bet this is the reason why you recommended this version, too. You guys were like, we're gonna educate her. Uh, so long live rock and roll. Thank you, Dio, Black Sabbath, and uh, all of you amazing viewers who suggested this. Thank you so much. I'm I'm really glad that I now know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> big black shape looking up. Nice range on that. Said, I know where you want to be. So come with me, I'll give you desire. But first, you gotta burn in fire. Whoa. Whoa, that was some fire. And they have ugh, long hair. Maybe the reason they do this so often is because they're like, well, is it still there? Yeah, okay, the fire didn't get it during that concert. Whew, boy, thank goodness. Um, that's, uh, I loved the way he sang Desire. And he did, uh, he did Desire, and he did like a little mm moment at the end, which uh, made it sound very desireful. Let's go back. It was great. <laughs> That's really good. You gotta burn in fire! I wouldn't want that fire near my hair. Just saying. <laughs> There's your amazing dichotomy. Very, very, very clear in this song. Um, I loved uh, with the fire moment, there was just such a rush of energy in the sound from the various instruments. Uh, 
it had me smiling so huge. Uh, I it's I don't I don't want to go back to that moment and point out to all the technical things that were happening to make that possible. I just want to point out the awesome feeling that they created. Ultimately, you use technique to portray a message and to give energy and feeling to something. And I really like the way that it culminated in that moment. Listen to the different vowels he uses for on and on. Uh, technically, this is an ah vowel, but sometimes he goes on and on, on and on, on and on. He'll play with the different placements of that ah, so it has shades of different vowels in it. I thought that was all for just a, a second, just so you know. I was very curious, uh, but I was like, there's another minute left at least, right? Uh, and uh, some really exciting energy in the drums. I have no idea what's about to happen, other than it feels like it's got some sort of build. <laughs> So the words are a little difficult to understand here, um, but I looked them up uh, to try and, and catch exactly what he's saying. I don't think that that's his fault. I think that this is just live sound in the 80s too. So impressive that we have this much clarity already. Um, but this is, I think this part is really interesting in the lyrics. So I'm gonna read it off. Um, they, say it, they say that life's a carousel, which uh, that you think about the spinning in it and that makes this shift in the music. The music does feel like it's got more of a spinning feel to it right now, so that makes sense. Oh, spinning fast, you've got to ride it well. The world is full of kings and queens who blind your eyes and steal your dreams. It's heaven and hell, oh well. Oh, I love the imagery in those lyrics. It's very, very, very vivid. And I like the way he's very actively just getting those words out. Okay, that's it. Uh, wow, that end is quite the rush. I feel a little blown away by the ending of that. I love the way that they ramped it up and just, you know, went for it. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm never going to get over the way he plays with his hair. The kind of like, oh, yeah, moment. I think it's, it's amazing. It's hilarious. It's so dramatic. He's a very dramatic singer. You hear that in the way that he um, he enunciates things for sure. But you also really hear that in the way that he brings in different vibrato and from the way he interrupts himself and then maybe draws out longer lines. I like it. I feel like he could probably really pull off some opera pretty dang well. Uh, I really love the way that he brings so much emotion and expression. It's not, it's not as much the emotion, it's much more the expression. He has so much expression that he brings into sounds that are like scatting sounds from jazz. That's really fun. And it's fun to hear him add vibrato and take vibrato away and add a little bit of rough edges and then take those rough edges away. He's got a lot of different vocal tools to express the sound that he wants. And he really does sound intentional. He doesn't ever go for something partway. He goes for it all the way, which is very delightful to get to observe. And uh, I now know and approve of this wholeheartedly. Long live rock and roll. <laughs> uh, thank you, you guys. I really appreciate this recommendation. I think that it's just, well, first of all, I finally got to hear Dio, who is amazing, just like you said he would be. I feel like I got so much more education than just that. So thank you so much for joining me and recommending this. And I hope that you'll continue to make those recommendations down below. Uh, put those in the YouTube comments. We do count them as evidenced by this video. You can also make recommendations on Patreon too if you want to come and join us there. Or you can find me on the website at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you guys around somewhere soon. Actually, actually, oh wait very soon, because soon we're going to be having our 250k party. Watch for details of that. They'll be coming here and posted on YouTube very soon. See you guys around.